Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Unity Gaming Services Roadmap Session at Unite 2022. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Joanna Van Gansen, Senior Director of Product for Unity Gaming Services, or UGS for short. Today, you'll be hearing from me, along with members of our product and engineering teams, about what we've released since the GA launch of our services platform in June. We'll also share highlights of a few things we're working on over the next six months. We want you to leave here today with three things. First, an understanding how UGS products can help you today, no matter where you are in the game development lifecycle. Second, confidence that we're committed to solving the challenges you face that take time away from improving the game experience for your players. And finally, we're hoping you're excited and inspired by what you'll be able to create with UGS going forward. For those of you just learning about UGS, we went into beta just over a year ago and in June launched a complete end-to-end -end services platform for live games. Today, UGS has more than 20 products and services that support every stage of live game development. UGS contains the foundations that are needed for every live game and takes care of the heavy lifting for things like authentication and multiplayer that would otherwise require specific expertise to get right. We've designed our platform to give you choice so that it can be adapted to your development environment. You can use all the services in the platform together and realize the benefits of centralized data and one dashboard for understanding your game's performance, or you can integrate UGS with the third party or custom services and tools you're already using. With UGS, you have the tools and services to engage and understand your players. You can then use these insights to refine and improve the player experience and grow your live game. We've made it easy to get started with samples, guides, and really comprehensive documentation. We also have a generous free tier and credit system that lets you get started with little risk. All of these products are fully production ready and being used by games of all sizes today. Going forward, we're committed to regular cadence of releases that will include updates and feature enhancements for our existing products, as well as bringing you new and innovative products and services. We know that the challenges you may be facing are different for each of you, depending on what kind of game you're working on, how big your team is, and the level of expertise and skill set of your team. Not to mention, you probably have some budget constraints. We believe that indie devs should be able to have the same gameplay mechanics, insights, and streamlined workloads as the bigger studios. We've learned that there are some common challenges for most game developers. You want to optimize your resources and reduce the need for specialized development skill sets and decrease the cost for software, services, and infrastructure. You often need to spend more time than you'd like on integration into your existing development processes, services, and tools. It's not always clear when and how to best engage and delight your players. Finally, you want to obtain and integrate those tools and insights that can be used to improve your game success. Our goal is to simplify these complex challenges throughout the game development lifecycle. Let's start by taking a look back at our releases since GA that help address these challenges. We'll show you how we've made game server hosting and matchmaker truly self-serve and easy to implement, no special networking or hosting experience required, allowing you to optimize your development resources to build a better game instead. We've delivered an ambitious first-person shooter battle royale game sample with game server hosting and matchmaker integrated with Photon Fusion. We know many of you use other netcode solutions, so we've built this to give those of you who use that offering a head start on your next multiplayer game. We've also been hard at work providing options integrating UGS with tools and workflows you already have. We've begun to integrate UGS into Google Cloud Marketplace. If you have an existing relationship with Google Cloud, you can access UGS products, game server hosting, and voice and text chat in the Google Cloud Marketplace today. This gives you more options for access, integration, and payment for these services. We've added a new bring your own ID feature to allow seamless integration with UGS authentication. And shortly, we'll demonstrate how UGS supports calling external APIs and how to automate deployments with cloud code. Voice and text chat is a proven feature to help keep your players engaged. The new mobile SDK simplifies the job of enabling in-game communication 
when navigating the complex world of mobile and its variety of devices and operating systems. Finally, tools for success. We'll show you how analytics funnels and the live ops calendar help you understand your players and track their engagements. We have got quite a few demos, so let's get started. First, we're gonna showcase our multiplayer solutions, which added self-service capabilities for game server, hosting, and matchmaker. Before, these capabilities were only available as a managed service offering through our sales team. Today, we've made it fully self-serve and incredibly simple to host a game and set up a rules-based matchmaking system that's customizable and delivers a better player experience. You may have seen some of this demo in the keynote, but here's a closer look on how we've made it easy to do game server hosting and matchmaking. Here's one of our multiplayer engineers, Dan, to walk you through it. Hi, my name is Dan. I'm a staff software engineer at Unity, focusing on multiplayer game services. Today, I'm going to demonstrate the self-service offerings from Unity Matchmaker and Unity Game Server Hosting, formerly Multiplay, both of which are now in general availability. Matchmaker and Game Server Hosting bring years of industry experience to your fingertips. The battle-tested solutions that launched titles such as Apex Legends and Overcooked are now available to everyone. You can get your multiplayer game servers up and running and connected to players around the world in minutes. Let's get started. Let's take a look at Game Server Hosting first. We have a simple five-step setup guide integrating your game server using one of our software development kits, uploading your game server's assets, executables, configuring how your server should run, and where your server should be created. First up is builds. Builds are wrappers for your executables and your assets. You can upload them via our user interface, via the API, or even using a container image. The latter also lets you ship any runtime dependencies or libraries your game server may need to run. You can have multiple builds within a single project, which can be useful for testing different game modes or different versions of your server. Build configurations define how to run your servers. What launch parameters or arguments do you need to run your server? What is the name of your executable? How much resources does your server need to run? the latter of which is really important for A, controlling your hosting costs and B, efficiently placing your servers on the available capacity and hardware. Fleets define where your game servers will be hosted. You can define at a regional level how many game servers you want to have, the minimum servers you need, the maximum servers you want. This allows you to reach your player base while also giving you the flexibility to control your hosting costs. Let's take a look at our servers. We can see that we have two servers running here, one running each of our build configurations in our development fleet. Now that we do have these servers running, we need to get players connected to them. Let's go and take a look at Unity Matchmaker. Matchmaker has two key concepts. Queues and pools. Queues can be used to group players together by game mode, for example. Here we have a battle royale queue. We could have other queues for deathmatch or capture the flag, for example. Within a queue, we define how many players we want per matchmaking ticket and how many pools we'll have in the queue. A matchmaker ticket represents a player or game client's intent to find a match. A pool is the part of your queue that defines the logic for matching players and also what servers they end up playing on. A queue can have many pools, allowing you to dynamically filter and group players together using the rule builder. We can choose what region these players will be playing in. We can set the team counts, minimums and maximums, the player counts across the whole match. We can even define custom match rules based on data we have available in our tickets. We could send beta testers to different sets of servers, for example. Matchmaker also supports backfill. Backfill allows players to match into ongoing matches, allowing you to maintain player counts per match and save resources by directing tickets to existing servers instead of creating new servers. Okay, we're now in a place to reach world scale with our game. Let's see this in action. 
Okay, this is BR200, a 200-player Battle Royale game developed by Exit Games and integrated with the Unity Gaming Services. This is available to download on the Unity Asset Store right now. It ships with the Unity Gaming Server Hosting and Matchmaker Software Development Kits, and it's already integrated with the Unity Gaming Services out of the box. The servers you saw us configure earlier and the matchmaking rules are ready to go to allow us to play this game. So let's hit quick play and get into a match. Behind the scenes, Matchmaker is working with Game Server Hosting to find us a server. A matchmaking ticket has gone in. Our queue and pool are processing this right now. And we're up and running with a AAA grade Battle Royale on Unity Gaming Services. This sample makes use of the Photon Fusion multiplayer package. And while Unity continues to invest in its own netcode for game objects and DOTS netcode products, BR200 demonstrates that a large-scale multiplayer game can be developed in Unity and operated on Unity Gaming Services. Let's drop into the match. BR200 will allow you to run a 60-player Battle Royale match out of the box with game server hosting and matchmaker. And with the right hardware, this game will scale up to 200 players per match. And so to recap what you've seen today, we've set up game servers, we've set up matchmaking rules, and we're now able to play a Battle Royale game at world scale. And with that, I will sign off and leave you to it. I'm going to go enjoy this match. Cheers. Thank you, Dan. I never get tired of seeing that demo. I've been in game development for many years. It's exhilarating to see the strides we're making to increase access for multiplayer games for all game developers. We've taken these complicated tasks of game server hosting and matchmaking that used to take specialized skills months to build and integrate down to minutes. All right, let's shift gears to workflow integration. UGS provides an end-to-end -end solution if you need it, but we also know that many of you have other products and services that you'll want to use in concert with UGS. We're committed to developing features and functionalities that make integration with third-party systems and data sources easier. An important integration option we have delivered recently is in the authentication space with a feature we call Bring Your Own Identity or BYOD. As long as your identity system is OpenID compliant, you can integrate it into UGS authentication, allowing you to easily link your players across your game services. This solution works for both custom identity systems you might build in-house, as well as popular identity solutions such as Firebase, Cognito, and Epic account services. We're currently working to add support for even more BYOD mechanisms, such as JSON web tokens, to ensure we're maximizing interoperability for all identity solutions you might be using or evaluating. We're also working on a built-in Unity sign-in solution as a part of UGS authentication in 2023. This will provide an out-of-the-box identity solution that will help springboard your users into cross-device and cross-platform play. Marius is now going to walk us through how UGS is making it easier to integrate custom or third-party APIs and services into your game and how you can do this directly within the Unity editor. Hi, I'm Marius, a software engineer on the Cloud Code team. Cloud Code allows you to write and run your game logic in the cloud. Today, I'm going to show you how to write your Cloud Code scripts and publish them using the Unity Gaming Services CLI. Let's start the demo. Here I have a very simple script, hello. This script simply returns hi from cloud code. Another script I have is catfact. This script reaches out to an external API, catfact.ninja, retrieves a random fact about cats and returns that. The third script reaches out to an external API as well. It returns some random data about a user. Here we are saving the name from that data that was generated. And we're storing that in another service that we have under Unity Gaming Services called CloudSafe. Last piece of the puzzle here is this C-sharp Unity script, which initializes the Unity Gaming Services, signs in as an anonymous user, and I have a function here, which calls out to Cloud Code, calling a function by a parameter that is string. We're going to be using the Unity Gaming Services CLI to deploy these three scripts. The UGS CLI is currently in alpha, uh, but it will be available later this year. Once the CLI is done, we can confirm that the scripts have been deployed by heading over to the dashboard and checking the script section under Cloud Code. Heading over to Unity, I have three buttons that I've set up that are calling the C Sharp Scripts function that I've earlier showed you. That function requires a string parameter that correlates to the Cloud Code script name, and here's how I'm passing it. Let's run the project. And once we click the button that calls the hello script, we have received 
Hi from Cloud Code. I will show you how quick it is to iterate your Cloud Code scripts. I will leave this project running in the background, head on over to my code editor, gonna change hi to hello, and I'm gonna deploy that again. Just a quick note that with the CLI, you can integrate your cloud code into your CI CD pipelines. And with external access, you can unlock use cases such as accessing Unity Gaming Services APIs, making use of your own or third party services, combining them with the UGS services, or building cloud code into your support workflow that is generating tickets from game events. Heading over back to Unity where the project is still running, we're going to call the same hello function again. And as you can see, we have received the new message that we've just published. The second button, as we are aware, calls out to the cat fact. As you can see, it returns as a cat fact. And the third button here calls the random name script. As you can see, we have successfully received a randomly generated name from the external API, and it has been successfully saved in CloudSave. If we head on over to the dashboard, CloudSave, and have a look, we can see the data that we have just saved. That's it for this demo. Thanks for your time. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to reach out to us on the Cloud Code Board on the Unity Forum. Thanks, Marius. That was a great demo of how you can expand the functionality and behavior of your live game with external services and quickly deploy those changes without having to update a binary on the client. All right. In order for you to deliver more engaging experiences for your players, we focus on making it incredibly straightforward to add voice and chat to your mobile games. Our voice and text chat services, formerly known as Vivox, are a leader in real-time communications for multiplayer games. Multiplayer games have historically been played on PC and consoles to a large extent. This is no longer true. Players and developers have told us that they want to play on the go, often the same games they're playing at home on their PCs or consoles. These services are making games on the go simpler by making sure you don't have to worry about adapting your voice chat implementation to mobile use cases. We do it for you. With smart platform audio management, the voice chat service handles capture and render devices seamlessly and configures the optimal audio route for you. Whether your players want to use a wire or wireless headset, we have you covered. If they just want to use the built-in loudspeaker or mic, We'll make sure there's no nasty echo leaking into the voice stream so that every participant can have a high quality voice session. With automatic connection recovery, we make sure that using your in-game voice chat, whether at home or on the bus or at a corner cafe, doesn't require you to write more lines of code to handle network disruptions. Our service will attempt to recover gracefully whenever the internet is available. If it's not, we'll make sure your session is not left in a bad state when it needs to be cleaned up, or in a bad state that would need to be cleaned up, rather. Finally, we recognize that your players' phones and tablets are highly personal devices. Today, when a player mutes themselves mid-play, they may still see that privacy indicator on, and they're never sure whether someone's listening or not, even when your app is not transmitting any data. With our privacy mute feature, we've made sure you have a way to cleanly disconnect any capture device when a player mutes him or herself. This means that when that, that green or orange privacy indicator will go away. Whether it's handling mobile specific capture and render devices, operating in less than ideal network conditions, or ensuring your users' privacy, we've got you covered. Voice on mobile allows cross play with PC, Mac, and console, and it works great with Unity, Unreal, and any C++ engine. Now we'll dive into tools that help you understand your players and support your game's success. Here's Claire to kick us off with a demo on our analytics funnels. Hi, I'm Claire McGolgan. I'm a product manager here at Unity, focusing on analytics. Today, I'm going to be talking about Unity Gaming Services Analytics, which went into GA in June this year. Analytics enables you to understand your game performance and player behavior so that you can focus on building engaging experiences for your players. I'm going to be demoing one of our core analysis features, Funnels. This feature allows you to visualize your player journey throughout your game by defining a sequence of steps a player goes through within a given time period. It helps you to validate your assumptions, identify opportunities to boost your KPIs, and to analyze player progression, which I'll be focusing on in this demo today. So player progression is good to analyze as it allows you to understand if a level is too difficult or is taking your players too long to complete. 
and provides oversight as to where your players are dropping off along the journey. So in my game, I have a level up event, which tracks a custom parameter of the user level. And I want to track my player progression from levels one through to three. And in this case, I'm only interested in my Android players. So I'm going to hit apply. And as you can see below, the table has generated a report that shows me the completion rate of my of players going through my entire funnel and the drop off and completion for each step throughout the funnel. The table below adds more information around the average and median completion time. Thanks, Claire. Analytics funnels are an incredibly powerful tool for understanding your play progression, validating assumptions, discovering potential issues, and identifying opportunities to improve your game. Next up is Michael with the Live Ops Calendar. Hi there, my name is Michael Forrest and I'm the product manager for the Unity Player Engagement Team. Today, I'm going to be showcasing our new Live Ops Calendar, which is available in open beta today and will be in general availability in early 2023. The Live Ops Calendar lets you quickly and easily see an overview of the date-based aspects of your live operations and let you quickly plan and adjust those. So you can see your push notifications and your A-B tests and seasonal events like Halloween all in a calendar view. You can see monthly, quarterly, and yearly views to give you a nice overview. Events can be filtered based on the players that are participating and the status of those events. You can quickly and easily search. So I might want to filter down for only my Halloween events. And I can quickly create drafts of new events and place them right on my calendar. So I might want to create Christmas 2022, which starts on a Wednesday and finishes a week later. I can see that up here immediately in my calendar. And just like your calendar app of choice, you can drag to update dates and times for events. Thank you for your time. Uh, our team hope that you find this new feature useful and we look forward to delivering further improvements to the Unity community. Thanks, Michael, for showing us how much easier it is to keep track of the date-based aspects of your game's live operations. All right, let's recap what we've gone over so far. We've seen demos of game server hosting and matchmaker, both of which reduce the need for specialized skill sets. We've discussed BYOD and saw cloud code deployments and CLI simplify integration with external services. Voice on mobile makes it easier to create engaging experiences on mobile and the analytics funnels and live ops calendar deliver those insights that help you understand your players and their engagement. As we look forward, we're staying true to our goal to simplify complex challenges by doing the heavy lifting for features you want across all of UGS, like experimentation and game diagnostics. On the workflow front, we're delivering multiplayer SDKs to simplify integration for those of you using Unreal, along with environments and a CLI to automate and streamline your production processes. We're continuing our focus to provide engaging and innovative player experiences like enabling your players to become creators with user-generated content, along with filling some key gaps in our current functionality. We also wanna highlight services and tools we are working on to support your success in finding an audience for your game and monetization to fund your development. All of what we're showing you today is in development, some in alpha, some proof of concept. So these are not polished or products with final UX but we want to take this opportunity to share our excitement about the areas we are investing and hear your feedback. One thing we've heard from many of you is the need to test and evaluate the impact of changes on your live game. We've built experimentation into the foundation of UGS, starting with our Game Overrides A-B testing feature we launched in August. This feature allows you to change any config variable and split your override into variants so that you can see its impact on your game. Since matchmaking is a core to the quality of a multiplayer game, 
it's critical to be able to understand which design and implementation choice will have the most positive effect on your player base. Configuring matchmaking rules often requires experimentation to get it right. With our matchmaking A-B testing manager, you can experiment with matchmaking configurations while minimizing any risk to your live game operations or revenues. In three simple steps, you can configure, apply them to the matchmaker, and evaluate which has the best impact on your player experience. With this feature, we've implemented a flexible matchmaker queue and pull system that can be used to create multiple matchmaking variations. You can set up the rules in the Unity dashboard without any code changes. Once you've created the matchmaker variants, the AB Testing Manager can assign the variants to different audiences. You can set up the testing time for a scheduled session, define your target audience, or just select player types like new players, engaged players, or recent spenders. Then you can control the percentage of these players that you want to allocate to an A-B test. You can compare the impact of the different variants in one dashboard view. Here we use an average number of sessions joined by each player as an example. The A-B testing manager will support retention, engagement, monetization metrics to give you a full view of the impact of different variants. Then you can pick the rules that meet your goals or go back and create new rules to test. In order to have a thriving community, not only do you need to match the right players at the right time in the right place, but you want to ensure they have a healthy and enjoyable communication. Let's take a look at our voice analysis tool, which is an ML-based voice analytics service aimed at identifying toxic player behaviors in voice chat communication. I'll hand it over to Leticia to walk us through the solution. Hi everyone, I'm Leticia, Senior Product Manager working on safety for voice chats. Today I'll be showing our voice analysis product that is now in alpha. We're looking for an open beta by the later half of 2023. So this is a downstream service for voice chat, which means that it's technically available on customers that are currently on V5. The reason for that is that we have an internal integration that allows to trigger recordings and send them for audio processing with our Speech Insights API. In this alpha version, we are triggering recordings based on player reports, and we currently have customers to retrieve API results and audio files so they can plug into their moderation systems. We're also building a UI prototype that allows end users, moderators, to visualize and playback these results and share that feedback with us. We are supporting two main journeys for our users. The developer one, with all the necessary steps to activate this product into our data gaming systems or services, and the moderator one, which is the one that acts on the information that we actually provide by helping users prioritize, navigate, and review the player reports. Now, regarding the main features for Alpha, we have toxicity detection, where we're qualifying and quantifying toxicity within the session, but also player insights, predicting player demographics and pinpointing toxicity exposure to certain type of demographics we might consider more vulnerable within a community. Because our goal is to bring the most value to our customers, we are enabling moderators to provide feedback. They are the subject matter experts on community management, and we want to leverage that knowledge so we can evaluate our toxicity detection capabilities and continuously adjust to the reality of live player data. Now let's look at our prototype, understand what these features actually do, and also toxicity detection features. Here you can see them row by row, player by player, and how they come along together. You can see there's color coding as well. The changes in the wave size and opacity are visual elements that help users navigate the audio and understand visually how the conversation is progressing across the players. So if I zoom out, I can get an understanding of who's being the most toxic really quickly. And in comparison to a different session, you can see this is a different type of situation. This is just an example file where we have a player that is talking. As you can see, there's no toxicity. And suddenly there's a loud disrupted noise. This way we can easily map here in the audio wave. It's very loud, very disruptive, and we can also detect this is not a human sound. So that's it for the demo. Thank you for watching. Looking forward to share more updates on closed beta soon. Thanks, Leticia. Anytime you're connecting players and communities, you want to manage community dynamics and moderate undesirable behaviors. This is a big challenge that should be addressed to maintain a positive experience for your players. This service will be instrumental in enabling moderators to better manage their communities and create a positive player experience.
Many of the most popular games today enable creators to build their own assets, characters, levels, and other game components. Providing these capabilities prevents several challenges. You'll first need to enable the asset creation. Then there's asset publishing and distribution. You'll also want to moderate that content to make sure it's something that represents the values of your game. And finally, you need to make those assets available to other players. We're putting all of these things together into a user-generated content or UGC system that creates a more engaging and dynamic player experience. I'd like to welcome Jason, who's gonna walk us through the UGS services currently in development. Welcome to the user-generated content demo for our alpha release. Today, we'll go over everything that UGC offers to game developers and players. Let's begin in the Unity dashboard where a game developer will onboard their project into UGC. First, we'll create a fresh project, then we'll travel to the Live Ops section in the sidebar where we'll find the User Generated Content section. We'll click the Set up UGC for your game button to see a form that takes additional info about our game, such as description, a threshold for moderation, and a banner image. Once we click Submit, our project is ready to have the UGC SDK integrated into our Unity game. Here we see a demo UGC game that we built and has the UGC SDK integrated. It showcases a level builder UI for players to build their own custom levels to share with other players. Here we see a player creating a level, testing it out, then publishing it with a name, description, and some tags. Now we're back in the Unity dashboard where the game developer can view and moderate all the content that players have created in their game. We can see how many times each piece of content was reported by players and its rating level out of 5. We can also hide the content from the public if we want. This is the public web portal where players can browse content that is created by the community for a game. They can search for content or filter by the tags that were assigned to the content by the creator. Once a player has found a piece of content they want to play, they could sign in and subscribe to the content, which will add it to their own personal library. Their library can be used by the game developer to show the player's items in-game. Also, anyone who is signed into the portal can choose to report content if they don't like it by clicking the Report This Content button. Back in the Unity dashboard now, a game developer could see how many times a content has been reported and manually hide the content if needed, or reset the amount of reports. Back in the game view, we can see some UI in our demo game of a player that can browse all the same content that is displayed in the public web portal. In this UI, they can also just click play to start playing the content right away. The player may also choose to rate the content on a scale of 1 to 5 stars so that other players know how good the content is. Or they can report the content if it's inappropriate. Back in the U-Dash, the game developer could see the rating for every piece of content, and again, they could see the amount of reports for each content. One other neat feature of UGC is our custom webhooks integration. A game developer can choose to listen to certain events that are connected to their project, such as when a new piece of content is uploaded by a player, and then they could receive a webhook request with the details. This powerful behavior can be used by game developers that want to automate some processing of content or perform other programmatic tasks on the content. Thanks, Jason. Now that you've seen how you can manage UGC in your game along with the player experience, you might be wondering how you can help your players create that content. We created the UGC Editor Bridge to allow game developers to leverage the Unity Editor as a flexible content creation tool for UGC assets. It has our UGC service integrated and works out of the box to enable your creators to publish their assets straight from the editor to our backend service and then consumed in your live game. Here's Ming to show how it works. UGC Editor Bridge is a Unity Editor plugin that developers can distribute to their user base. Uh, so this plugin can be deeply customized for a specific project with common configuration rules uh, exposing project setting. The end user can log in directly through this uh, panel and then start creating UGC content using the editor. Here we use an image asset already created another project to save time. We can run validation rules to ensure the asset meets the game requirement. And then we can start testing the asset locally here in the game to see if it works well. 
Uh, so here we are testing with a simple painting game, which is a UGC sample. We actually ship with SDK. So the asset is showing up correctly in the canvas, as we see. And then also we can, you know, paint around. This is yeah, what it, the experience actually looked like. And now let's publish this new asset. We can put in some metadata to describe the new asset and publish straight to our UGC service. So that concludes uh, this demo. Thanks, Ming. This is an amazing collection of services that seamlessly work together to enable UGC. In the same way that we've made game server hosting and matchmaking more accessible, our goal for this service is to make an engaging player experience and complicated development challenge easy and easier to develop with your game, within your game, with fewer resources. Leaderboards are a common game mechanic used to engage players, and our leaderboards support a wide range of customizations. You can have as many leaderboards as you want in your game. Scores within a leaderboard can be grouped, for example, by geographic location or language or by game level. Players can also be automatically grouped into a fixed size cohort to encourage competition. Leaderboards tiers can be used to differentiate players as they move in the rank. You can use the dashboard, an API, or the CLI to create and configure leaderboards and to perform operations like resetting them either manually or automatically. Here's Devin to walk us through it. My name is Devin Grant and I'm a senior software engineer working on leaderboards. Leaderboards is just entering closed beta with a broader release targeted for the end of 2022, beginning of 2023. Leaderboards allows you to submit, sort, rank, and retrieve player scores within your game. Here on the dashboard, we have a leaderboard configuration with our ranking type set to highest to lowest, lowest to highest is also available, and our update type set to keep best. This means that whenever a player score is submitted, it will be compared to their previous score and only updated if the score is better. You can also set this to keep latest if you simply want to always keep the latest player score. Heading over to our leaderboard, you can see that we can retrieve our top 10 high scores or also a paginated view, which we're using to retrieve a view around the player so they can compare themselves to other scores. If we submit a new score, you can see that following our keep best update type, because the score is better, our player will move up the leaderboard into the top 10, whereas their position would not have changed if we had submitted a worse score. Leaderboards also allows you to reset scores used for things like daily or weekly leaderboards. And you can also archive the current scores so that you can go back and view them for things like seeing yesterday's top scores. If we now go back to our game, we can see that the leaderboard has cleared out the scores and our previous scores are now available in our previous leaderboard. You can also create multiple leaderboards so you can track multiple statistics, things like goals, assists, and saves within a game, for example. Or you can create multiple leaderboards to use multiple reset schedules, things like maintaining a daily, weekly, and monthly leaderboard within the same game. Thanks so much, Devin. You know, leaderboards are a key component of so many games, and we're excited this highly requested feature will be coming soon to UGS. Another top requested feature we're working on that helps players compete and connect is friends and groups. You can use the friend service in combination with other Unity gaming services to build the foundation of your in-game community by allowing players to invite their friends to lobbies or chat with voice and text. You can also look forward to future updates with player managed groups that enable your community to grow on their terms. And now here's Vincent with a look at a new audio plugin feature that helps you adjust the sound of your game to its environment. Hi, I'm Vincent Gauthier, software developer on the voice and text chat team formerly known as Vivox. Today, I'd like to show you this new Unity audio plugin we've been working on. This is still a proof of concept at this point, but we expect it to be coming to voice and text chat in Q1 of 2023. The goal of the new plugin is to make it easier for you to integrate voice chat audio inside the overall audio experience of your game. This could mean exposing the voice chat volume mixing to your players alongside your game's music or sound effects, and it could also mean changing the voice chat experience according to your game's environment. To do so, our new plugin exposes three new audio mixer effects to be used inside the editor. Those are currently known as the VVox Output Mix, which contains all audio for all participants of a channel, 
the Vivox mic source, which is where you can find all audio coming from the current player's microphone recording, and the Vivox mic sync, which is where you can send data that will be used um, as the current player's audio for his microphone. So I've already included this plugin to this project. And now if I go inside my audio mixer groups, I can see that the three effects are available for me to use. I can then combine it with other effects or change the volume, use it directly inside my game or send it back to the voice chat with the VVox mic sync effect. I've created a couple effects for you to hear how it sounds. What sounds? So for this one, I should be sounding as though I'm coming from a radio. And for this next one, as if I'm in a cave with some water. This is just a couple examples of how this makes it easier for you to integrate it inside your Unity game. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Vincent. This one is really fun, and we think will help you create those engaging and immersive experiences that players are looking for today and in games of the future. Our own development team has had a lot of fun making different iterations. Similar to our UGC demo, the audio plugin is also an example of how we're improving your workflow by integrating UGS directly into the Unity editor. Let's switch to gears a bit again for tools for success. We're making it easier to understand your game's performance. Here's Fabrizia to walk us through Cloud Diagnostics Advanced. Hi, you all. My name is Fabrizio Rossano, and I'm the product manager for Cloud Diagnostic. Many of you are probably familiar with our crash and error reporting tool. And today, I would like to introduce you to our new product, Cloud Diagnostic Advanced, powered by Backtrace. We are partnering with Backtrace to offer you a more powerful tool to add support for your console games and take advantage of their expertise in supporting enterprise customers, all inside Unity dashboards. When you upgrade from Cloud Diagnostic, the last 90 days of your data are transferred and visible in Cloud Diagnostic Advanced Dashboard. The default view is the triage view, where you can see a fingerprint, which is an identifier of a group of errors created through the process of deduplications. This helps you reduce the individual number of error into a more manageable amount with the same underlying root problem for better prioritizations. Next, we use the debug view to dip deeper into a specific error and understand it better. We can see the call stack from the code, threads, and a console-like output. You can also update your error fingerprint from the debug view. For example, changing the status or assign it to someone to solve it in Jira or other tools in your workflow. You can also customize the report to contain extra data like attributes and breadcrumbs, which then can you view to get an even better understanding of exactly what's happening in the game at the time of the error. Last, in the Explore tab, you can filter and create data visualization that suits your need. You can switch to different data visualizations like the flame graph to better visualize pattern and bottlenecks. Cloud Diagnostic Advanced will be available as a self-serve product through Unity dashboards. Thank you. Thanks, Fabrizio. For those of you using our existing cloud diagnostic solutions, rest assured it's still fully supported. This new advanced offering gives you more options and deeper insights when you need them, and is powered by Backtrace, one of the leading diagnostic providers. Now let's dive into a new feature of our dashboard UI, custom dashboards. Let's welcome back Claire, who will be showing us how we've made the analytics dashboard customizable so you can easily see the data that's most important to you. This demo is for the custom dashboards feature, which is the latest feature within Unity Gaming Services Analytics. This is in closed beta now, but we expect to have open beta for you before winter 2022. Custom dashboards allow you to mediate all of your most important reports into one view, making them easy to monitor regularly and share with your colleagues. You can view a list of dashboards created within your organization and create new ones. You can select from the list of already existing reports to add Data Explorer funnels or SQL Data Explorer reports to your dashboard, or you can use CTAs above to create them, to create new ones. In this case, I have reports, so I'm going to select a Data Explorer report, a funnel report, 
and a SQL DivX report. And I'm going to add these to my dashboard. As you can see, these reports can be removed. Additional reports can be added and dashboards can be saved. So I'm going to save this demo person dashboard. As you can see, these charts can be used to monitor trends over time and quickly measure drop off and completion rates. They can also be used to show your custom SQL reports. These reports can be opened in a new tab and they could also be shared either by copying the URL or exporting as PNG. Thanks, Claire. This feature really helps you see what's happening in your game and prioritize the most important metrics to inform your iterations and continued development. We know that some of you are making games just for the love of gaming. However, many of you are also looking for help in finding an audience for your game or revenue to fund future developments, or maybe both. We're continuing to add features and capabilities to our user acquisition and monetization products to increase transparency and help you drive better outcomes, no matter if you're looking for users or generating revenue. Let's start with our user acquisition feature, custom app event targeting. Here's Prashant. Hi, I'm Prashant, product manager on the Unity Ads team. In this demo, I'll go through an exciting and long anticipated feature currently in alpha and targeted for a public beta release early next year, custom app event targeting. Advertisers often want to find users who are likely to perform a valuable downstream app event after install, for example, register an account or purchase a product. Let's now try creating this new campaign offering on our self-serve dashboard. Click on the create button. On this dialog, you see different campaign optimization options that are available. Select App Event Campaign and click on Next. On this step, select the app event you wish to target among the list of supported events. We expect to add more events and support custom app events in near future. Our algorithms determine the likelihood of the app event based on historical data and target those users with an ad. Select a name for the campaign and click on next. The campaign is now created. Below you see all the common fields that are required to set up the campaign you might already be familiar with. You also see the campaign specific detail, for example, name, the campaign goal, optimization event, and billing type. We support both CPM billing and CPI billing. This wraps our early preview of custom app event targeting product. Hope you are as excited as we are towards this release. Thank you. Thanks, Prashant. This tool really helps you if you're looking to reach the right players at the right time, depending on the type of interactions you're looking to drive, like registration or level completion, subscription and order. This also helps map the user funnel more accurately and gives flexibility in choosing the app events that best suited for your business at its current stage. I now we're onto our final demo, Ads Controls, which is a part of our Ads Monetization Toolkit. Here's Corey. Hi, I'm Corey Cohen, and I'm a product manager on the Unity Ads team focused on our monetized product. Ad Controls gives you the tools to review and manage the ad content shown in your apps so you can provide your users with an impactful ad experience. With Ad Controls, you have the ability to review ad content, as well as block ads by various criteria, including app store IDs, advertiser domains, categories, and age ratings. We have two new features that allow you to balance protecting your player's ad experience and seizing revenue opportunities. The first, now available to all customers, is Unblocking Insights. This provides the estimated revenue increase from unblocking advertisers that you currently have advertising in your app. This allows you to have the insights needed to determine if the revenue upside outweighs blocking their ad content. The second, to be released later in 2022 is sensitive attribute filters. 
This allows you to block sensitive ad content from showing in your app, such as tobacco and alcohol, and even video game weapons. These new features make it easier for you to seize all revenue opportunities without sacrificing your user's app experience. Thanks, Corey. These tools are all designed to allow you complete control over the ad surfaced in your game and provide the insights into additional opportunities for revenue so you can raise funds to support your growth and success. That was a lot of content. If you've made it this far, you've seen 12 demos, heard even more about planned features and functionality additions to the UGS platform going forward. What we've covered today are just the biggest initiatives our teams are working on. We're committed to a regular cadence of releases that will include updates and feature enhancements for existing products, as well as bringing you new and innovative products and services. We're staying true to our goal to simplify complex challenges in the areas of resource optimization, workflow integration, creating those engaging experiences and delivering tools that will help your game be more enjoyable for your players. And we're expanding on this promise beyond what we've covered today. We're working to be here for you throughout your development journey. We're working on more samples for different use cases and game types to help you get started and accelerate your development. We're working on our dashboard UI, documentation experience to make your workflows smoother. And we're working on our service and support offerings so you can put the knowledge and experience of our internal teams to work for you. There's always more coming. Let us know what you think of our plans and request features on the public roadmap. Sign up for the UGS newsletter. Keep an eye on alerts and notifications in the UGS dashboard for updates on the new releases and enhancements. And if you're interested in helping us alpha and beta test any of our new products, let us know in the forums. Thanks for listening.